Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the turbo pressure tubing. The actual part of the turbo system that pressurizes to the 8 pounds, 12 pounds, 19 pounds, whatever your car is programmed and designed to function at. Without some sort of turbo boost gauge, it is impossible to know when you have a problem with your pressurized turbo tubing system. The problem with the system can come on gradual enough that you don't feel the loss. Little by little, you're losing your power, you're losing your efficiency, and the whole system just loses its ability to give you the boost pressure that your car is designed to function with. In some cases, the tubing fails instantly. A clamp pops loose, a hose pops loose when you hit the gas. Sometimes people even report hearing a pop sound and then losing all their power. And in those cases, usually the car will no longer run. I got a call from a lady several months ago that said that she went to go around somebody. She hit the gas. She heard a pop noise. She lost all power. The car actually drifted to the side of the road. It would barely hold idle. And she called me and I went and checked on it. Problem was, one of these hoses, the clamp slipped off popped loose and she had a massive turbo pressure system leak which caused the car not to function. Now you could watch some of the other videos linked below that explains how this entire system works but basically your turbo charger supplies the air to the intake system. When you're accelerating and trying to pick up speed the intake system breathes in air, all this air is monitored, the pressure is monitored, the computer uh, tells the engine how much fuel to get and you get your proper fuel air mixture. Now if for some reason one of these tubes have popped loose or there's a massive hole in it then that air system won't function properly and your car may run but it probably won't run well enough for the car to function properly. So, you're cruising along, you press on the gas to pick up speed to get on the highway to get up to cruising speed or to pass somebody, go up a hill, whatever. This turbo spools up and it builds pressure. This pressure comes out of the top of the turbo through this tubing. And if you have a system with an intercooler, which most do, the tubing is routed into the intercooler. On this vehicle, it actually goes into the bottom of the intercooler. The air is a little warm coming off the turbo, so the intercooler is designed to cool that air off. The cool air comes out in this vehicle of this hose and then takes a turn and goes into the throttle body. If there's any splits, tears, cracks in any of this tubing or the rubber things or the intercooler, that intake will not get the pressure it needs to properly cause the car to have the performance it was designed to have. And if you want to improve your system and possibly upgrade it to a more up-to-date type of system, you would want to change your system and install what they call a rip kit and that's reverse intercooler piping as you see here. On this setup you see it on a lot of newer vehicles and it shortens the amount of intake piping thus having less space to pressurize and it reduces your turbo lag. So the pipe hooks up to your turbo it comes directly straight as possible line into your intercooler and then the air is pushed down through the intercooler similar to the radiator fluid 
then it comes out of the lower part of the intercooler and directly into the air intake throttle body and by doing this you probably shorten about heck maybe even a foot of piping that has to be pressurized by the turbo the minor downside to this is the cost of the piping and the tubing to connect everything up properly and as you can see here this gentleman has not found the proper tube yet to hook his idle air control valve back up to the throttle body the way it should be and he may have some performance in idling issues because of that uh, lack of setup there. In the case of the lady hitting the gas to go around somebody she all of a sudden had a massive gross air leak it could not build pressure it could not supply proper air to the intake manifold the fuel air mix not right the car won't run basically you take your foot off the gas or quit fluttering the, the pedal the car stalls I've actually seen people replace the spark plugs and wires on these vehicles they put the vehicle back together to do that for some reason they remove stuff like the intake tubing and stuff Two days later, a clamp slips off. The pressurized system makes the hose come apart from the intake tubing. And now, all of a sudden, you got a massive air leak. The car quits running, stalls on the side of the road, and people don't know what's going on. When in reality, one of these clamps came loose, a hose came loose, and now the car is not getting the proper metered air that it's supposed to. Therefore, it is very important to have some sort of turbo boost gauge and to know where that gauge is supposed to meter. If you have a gauge with numbers or it's digital, know that your system is designed to run at 9 or 10 PSI or 7 PSI or 12 PSI. Whatever it is, you need to know. If you have a gauge like this that has a slider on it, you should know how far that slider is supposed to go across when this turbo system is functioning properly that way when something goes wrong you can see it drop off and you can deal with the boost leak and get that fixed and restore your car to its properly running function ever since i got this car a couple of weeks ago i noticed it hasn't had the power that it should it was running nice and smooth it accelerated like a non-turbo car but it did not accelerate like a turbo car. So I just checked everything out. And or at best, the gauge was going maybe a needle width into the white, which is nothing. This thing should have been going three quarters of the way to two thirds of the way into the white. And it just wasn't doing that. Since everything else seems to be running smoothly and the car seemed to function well, starts and drives great. I started pulling these hoses off. I found this small tear in this hose. I didn't see that it went through, so I figured there was another one. I started taking these rubber hoses off one at a time until I finally seen that there was some small cracks in this hose here. And when I removed the hose, turned it over, I seen this big tear in the bottom side of it. So this hose is installed like this. It's impossible to see that tear on the back side it is total opposite from my view if you look in there you can see those holes in it there that breathed right through that cut over there so with a bare hand i might have been able to fill it but it's best to take these hoses off one at a time until you find the one that's torn another situation where you may not be getting your proper boost pressure is if this intake system hose is torn as you can see here this hose is damaged it's got a tear in it a lot of people won't see or know that while you're driving around but it will cause you to lose boost pressure and your car won't be as efficient as efficient as it should be so here it is there's a hole inside this intake tube and if you have a hole like that in any of your tubes you will lose boost pressure and your car just won't have the power that it needs to and it may also run extremely sluggish. I'm going to install a replacement hose that I have, take it for a test drive 
and see if it has all the boost pressure and power back. When replacing these hoses, in my opinion, unless you're trying to mock up some performance, it's always best to go back with the original OEM hose. Um, I did not have one of those on hand, so I had a silicone one on hand. Silicone hoses are normally more durable. They will probably last longer. However, they have a couple of drawbacks. Number one, although they are custom, they're usually not perfect. So this hose here, I notice as I have it in place, I can see a little buckle in it here. Maybe when it warms up, that buckle won't be as evident, but it's not a perfect fit. Another thing is, it's hard to get clamps to hold them and keep them in place. So you usually need to use stronger clamps that are designed for a silicone hosing because as your pressure builds, if that clamp is not tight enough, it'll pop loose. And I've heard of many, many people using silicone hoses have a situation where they hit the gas and the hose just pops off because the clamp couldn't hold it. Car's warmed up, my favorite light is on. Now I'm gonna see how high that boost gauge goes into the white area. The boost gauge did go higher, but it seems to me like it only went about halfway. It should have went three quarters. So I have some of my boost back, but not all of it. I'll check a couple things and see if I can get the rest of it back. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.